Hello everyone, hope you're doing alright, I hope you're keeping safe and of course I hope you're keeping sane. Um, now a lot of you will have heard the expression misery loves company. Now it's not specifically a, um, an expression about gambling or about any form of addiction but I think it can very very much be applied to addiction and in this case specifically to gambling addiction. Now when you quit gambling you will often find, as I've spoken about in previous videos, that there are certain people that you will lose from your life, the people that you may consider gambling friends. And um, like I say in a previous video, I think I've spoken about the differentiation between gambling friends, uh, who are people that you associate with purely because of your shared interest, or dare we say compulsion to gamble, and friends who gamble. I still have friends who gamble, but they would be friends regardless because we have other things in common. We met through other interests or through other circumstances other than our propensity to have a punt. So I've spoken about that in the past and how when you do quit gambling, the gambling friends tend to drift away in the same way that if you are um, a, an alcoholic who uses pubs rather than drinking at home or whatever when you get into recovery what you'll find is those people that you saw virtually day in day out no longer form part of your life and actually it's quite a positive thing because whilst these people in themselves may be decent people like yourself you know if you're hanging around with other gamblers they might be like you know yourself. They are decent people who have a problem. But if you're continuing to surround yourself with these people, it's going to hinder your recovery because it keeps you well attuned to the world of gambling. Anyway, that's the sort of slight rambling introduction over. The reason I want to talk about misery loving company is just something to be aware of when you start to quit. Now, I will use my own personal experience to explain exactly what I mean here. When you start to decide to quit gambling, when you get yourself into recovery and you make the decision that gambling can no longer be part of your life, it is absolutely vital, in my experience and my opinion, that you speak to a lot of people, particularly those closest to you, those who your habits and your behaviours will affect the most, and those who you believe you will garner the most support from. It's also essential that you open up to those closest to you so they can be effectively on the lookout for signs that all may not be good in your recovery. But there'll be certain people that you speak to who may and I would stress this right at the start, may subconsciously, not consciously, but subconsciously, not have your best interests at heart. And like I said, I'm going to use a personal example here. The pub I, um, I was going to say used to drink in, but still do, my local pub, when I used to go in there, um, I used to gamble every day, pretty much, excuse me. Um, I used to gamble pretty much every day. And I was gambling on other things as well, but I used to go in there and alongside, you know, having a few beers and stuff, I used to gamble on the machines in the pub. Now, I would say there was four of us, four regular people who went to that pub on an almost daily basis, and there were four of us who regularly played the machines in the same way that I did, i.e. in a slightly uncontrolled, habitual, um, compulsive way, i.e. we were the ones investing far more into these machines than we would ever deem possible to get back. So there were four of us, and one of the guys that used to come in the pub moved away, so there's now three of us, three guys who go in the pub and gamble, you know, every day. I then got into my recovery, I stopped gambling, however you wish to phrase it or address it. I stopped gambling. And I continue to go in the pub, which may not have been the best thing retrospectively, you know, it might not have been the wisest decision for me because I was still surrounding myself with that temptation. But, hey, look, here we are now, and all is okay in the world. So, you know, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that course of action, but it worked. It, I was all right, basically. So we won't go into that too much detail, but I was okay. But now there was only the two guys left who were, were still gambling. And this forms a problem for fellow addicts, for those around you who have the same compulsive behaviours as you do. Because by withdrawing yourself from that harmful behaviour that we were all indulging in as a, a trio or a foursome as it was originally, you are effectively nailing your colours to the mast and stating, 
this is a problem. This is a problem for me. And then by proxy, of course, what you're saying is that it is a problem for them also. Now, of course, you don't say these exact things and you, you know, you're there and you're supportive and what have you. But by quitting, by admitting that your gambling is a problem, you are saying that their gambling is also a problem. And they, of course, almost certainly will be aware of this. If you're gambling to the extent that I was, it's almost impossible to ignore the harm and the damage that you're doing to yourself and to those around you. But by surrounding yourself with people with similar addictions, with similar behaviours, you can convince yourself that, firstly, it's not unusual. You know, you're not alone. You can almost convince yourself that it's acceptable. And quite often, most importantly, you convince yourself that you're not the worst in the room. There is this mentality with all addictions and all harmful behaviours that when you can convince yourself that you're not the worst in the room you get to the at least I'm not stage now if we step away from gambling for a second and we look at alcohol you could be drinking you know 10 pints a day but you could say well at least I'm not you know putting vodka on my cornflakes uh, you know at least I'm not sitting on a park bench drinking cheap red wine out of a pa brown paper bag I don't think I've ever seen anyone do that but it's such a cliche isn't it you know so you get to the at least I'm not stage and when you surround yourself with gamblers in a pub there's always going to be someone who loses more money than you and when that someone who loses more money than you quits leaves gets into recovery makes a positive change in their life then you use your you lose your at least I'm not reference point and suddenly you become either closer to or at the point where you are the worst person in the room and then the feeling of judgment comes upon you because suddenly you are regarded by all as the gambling addict I knew people knew I had a problem but there was people around me that seemed to have on the face of it fiscally at least a worse problem so I could kind of sink into the background. But if those people had quit before me, um, and some of them, and I wish them well, are, are still very much gamblers. Um, if they had quit before me, then I wouldn't have had that at least I'm not point. And I would have felt the burden of not only the addiction itself and all the harm it was causing me, but the burden of the judgment of others. So for that reason, the people around you that you might think will understand you the best. You know, the fellow gambling addicts, the, the people that understand the addiction and on the surface of it will talk about the addiction to you or with you. They might not be ill-intentioned, but they may have reasons to not wish you the best in your recovery. They may wish to see your recovery fail. They may wish to see you lapse and relapse because it justifies to some extent their own behaviours it reinforces the fact that this is a more acceptable more common and widespread thing rather than singling them out as the worst in the room so for this reason I would avoid certain sources of advice and advice from these people whilst potentially fleetingly well-meaning maybe has ill intent behind it things like well, it, you know, it's only money, it's your money, you know, you do what you like with it. It's basically an invitation to continue to indulge in the same negative behaviours as them. And I will stress again at this point that these are not bad people. And they don't, they don't want you to come to any harm, but also if you stop and others around them stop, then they can find it harder and harder to justify their own addiction, to justify their own behaviours, and they can no longer point at other go at people and go, well, at least I'm not as bad as Phil. I'm not as bad a gambler as him. I'm not as bad a drinker as him. I got in the, yes, I might have got in the pub at two o'clock in the afternoon, but he was there when it opened. You know, the, that is why you'll find that groups of, it happens more with drinkers than gamblers, but you'll get groups of people who have nothing in common accept their addiction but by associating with each other and talking about menial futile things like I don't know football or whatever they can disguise their addiction much much easier than if they were sat in a pub on their own or they were stood at a fruit machine on their own or they were in the bookies on their own 
you know, hours and hours at a time, there can be no justification for that. But if you're having a, a drink with your mates and talking about football, or if you're meeting your mates for a couple of bets or whatever, it suddenly becomes, in your own mind at least, although almost certainly not to those around you, much more acceptable, much more normal, and helps you to perpetuate your addiction with less guilt, less burden, less judgment, and less of that need to, to, to do something about it. Um, I hope that was interesting. Uh, first sort of normalish video back, I guess, for a while. I've um, actually got a few other things I want to talk about. Um, one of which, actually, I've got here, um, which I actually read this, um, which is a little bit after the fact, to be honest, obviously, but um, a few people have mentioned it, and I was quite intrigued, actually, uh, by, so I, th I got it, um, and I read it, and uh, yeah, if you if you actually read the book, I'd be interested to know what your, your thoughts of it are, because um, I'll, I'll, I'll go into a bit more detail about it in in a future video, um, maybe give a, a sort of summary. But uh, yeah, if you if you tried that system, um, let me know what you think. But until then, uh, stay safe, stay sane, look after yourselves, stay gamble free if that's what you're doing. Um, yeah, and have a, a good weekend if I don't speak to you before. Pleasure as always. Take it easy. All the best.